Pedro Juan Gutierrez is the greatest Latin American writer you've never heard of. He grew up in Pinar del Rio and worked all kinds of jobs before becoming the world famous writer that he is today. Everything from selling ice cream, selling newspapers, serving in the army, and working as a swimming instructor. But perhaps his most famous non-novel writing job was his work as a journalist and has led to many people calling him the Latin American or Cuban response to Hunter S. Thompson. And while I generally think that it's not entirely useful to compare writers with each other and call somebody the French X or the Russian Y, I think that Hunter S. Thompson and Charles Bukowski have a lot in common with a lot of Gutierrez's work. And if you are a fan of them, you're likely to be a fan of him as well. Many view Gutierrez as the king of Latin American dirty realism, while others prefer the newer label of obscene hyperrealism. Regardless of how you want to classify his work, he became famous for his brutally honest depictions of the Havana underbelly and his writing that tells the story of disenfranchised, abused people in a way that is both incredibly realistic, incredibly graphic, but also incredibly beautiful, hopeful, and he conveys this, this joy of life that you see um, very, very prevalent across Latin America, irrespective of social class. People tend to have very polarizing opinions of Gutierrez, positive or negative. In my opinion, some of the best parts of Gutierrez's writing are these little bits of just reflections and almost mundanity in the midst of all the, the crazy reality or the crazy stories that he's telling of these Havana underclass members. One of my favorite passages from the story we're about to talk about later in the video goes as follows. It's entirely human, then, to be engulfed in nostalgia, and the only solution is to learn to live with it. Maybe, if we're lucky, nostalgia can be transformed into something sad and depressing, into a little spark that sends us onto something new into the arms of a new lover, a new city, a new era, which, no matter whether it's better or worse, will be different. And that's all we ask each day, not to squander our lives in loneliness, but to find someone, to lose ourselves a little, to escape routine, to enjoy our peace of the party. And I find that paragraph to be one of the most beautiful things I've ever encountered in, in writing, and when you contextualize it within the story that it was written in, it makes it even more beautiful, right? The story is about this person who is just so down on their luck, their life in, in many ways is terrible, but they have this, this, love for, this love for life and this longing for what's around that next corner, that new city, that, that new lover, that new person that they might see. And I think no writer truly encapsulates that, that beauty of those little moments better than Gutierrez. Now let's go ahead and talk about the story for today. Buried in Shit was published in 2001 in the Barcelona Review, which, by the way, is a literary magazine that I would highly recommend to anybody who enjoys the types of stories that I frequently review here on the channel. Through a collection of brutal yet hilarious exaggerations of the life of a member of the Havana underbelly, Gutierrez follows a character who is just incredibly down and out through just this, this smallest slice of life that really encapsulates the feelings of of that time period in Havana, but specifically in that time period in Havana for that very, very specific social class that he was a part of. In just a few thousand words, we hear stories of, of true desperation, of begging, of prostitution, of stealing, of taking advantage, of being taken advantage of, of lesbianism, of love, of hate, and everything in between. And we see all of this before settling on the main character who is really the star of, of the whole story. Gutierrez calls him Super Prick, and Super Prick was a performer in the red light district of Havana. He had an incredibly successful yet incredibly melancholic career, which left him with nothing except for his entire soul and the essence of his personhood being excavated for the betterment of others, particularly of others of a higher social status than he was. His story is essentially the tale of how other people, um, in this case, black members of this Havana underbelly, are continually taken advantage of and they are their mind in an essence of everything that society feels like they have of value until they're nothing more and then they're just eventually discarded. Gutierrez develops this further by illustrating how these, these people don't even have control over their own bodies. Super Prick, despite working in a sex show um, and being famous throughout Cuba for his performance, has never been able to actually have sex with his wife, but has rather spent a lifetime performing with his co-star called the golden blonde and i think her being blonde and golden is incredibly crucial to the entire story right she's a figurehead and she is pulling everything out of him and he has nothing left he has nothing left to give to his wife but he has to keep showing up to the shanghai every night he has to keep performing he has to keep doing what they tell him to do otherwise they don't eat right and dying is always worse than 
living in humiliation, or at least in the eyes of many it is. We see this terrible excavation of his core essence um, in a passage near the end of the story, which was one of the saddest things um, that I've read in quite some time. Gutierrez writes, He lifted up the small blanket that covered his stumps. He no longer had prick or balls. Everything had been amputated along with his lower limbs. It was all chopped off, all the way up to his hip bones. There was nothing left. A little rubber hose came out of the spot where his prick used to be and let fall a steady drip of urine into a plastic bag he carried tied at his waist. And so we see this performer is at the end of his life. He has nothing. The thing that made him famous is physically and quite literally non-existent anymore. They have taken everything that they perceive of value to him and he's been left to die alone. He's been deprived of the opportunity to fulfill any of his life's real or true functions and, but rather used as a, as a tool, as a means to an end. And I think that this story illustrates that in a way that doesn't just make you feel bad to feel bad, like a lot of modern stories will, but it makes you laugh. It makes you feel joy while you're reading it. And then 20 minutes later, 15 minutes later, two hours later, the next week, you start to think about the ideas of, of what Gutierrez was saying. And then that's when like the true meaning of everything starts to marinate inside of your head. And you start thinking, oh, wow, I think Maybe this isn't just a funny story about the Havana red light district, but this is actually an allegory for how these people are and were still treated today, both in Cuba and beyond. And I think that's the most valuable takeaway from reading any of Gutierrez's work, but particularly this story. And just at the end, Gutierrez gives us just a little bit of hope for disenfranchised people everywhere. He tells us that we always have to remember to laugh at ourselves and how great of a quality this truly is, because it's the only thing that can ever really ease the pain. And so if you're a fan of Bukowski or Hunter S. Thompson, or even just curious about Latin American literature outside of the big names like Borges, I would highly recommend reading Gutierrez. If you're unsure and not really wanting to invest into a four or 500 page novel like his Dirty Havana trilogy, I couldn't recommend a better place to start than Buried in Shit. The story only takes 15 to 20 minutes to read and you can really excavate all of his core themes and take a lot out of it. You might not love what you're reading and honestly, it might even disgust you, but the whole time, you'll know that he's not lying to you. Everything he writes is what he believes, and he's just telling you the world as he sees it. So in conclusion, pick it up, give it a read, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And as always, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you shortly for the next one.